steal its latest rankings and all eyes will be on Georgia, which beat Tennessee by two touchdowns on Saturday, a week after their loss to Ole Miss triggered their fall all the way to number 12. I want you to hear Ole Miss's head coach Lane Kiffin talking about his belief about what he wants in the SEC championship game. I've talked to other coaches, so I'll just kind of give you the feeling from some other coaches that, you know, they don't want to be in it. And, you know, the, the risk to get a bye, um, sorry, the reward to get a bye versus the risk to get knocked out completely. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a pretty big, that's a really big risk. So we got Heather and Paul in here and Lewis, who, of course, does the college games for us. It's a fascinating little point that he's making. Let's make sure it's clear. The four highest rated conference champions will get a bye. That's the plus, let's say, of being in the SEC championship game and winning it. But Heather, the fallback, the other side of that is if you make the SEC championship game and lose, maybe you get knocked out entirely. Is that a flaw in the system? Well, not only do you get knocked out entirely, if you do get an at-large buy, you have to win four straight games to win the national title. Is it a flaw in the system? Look, it's the one that the FBS conference commissioners agreed to. If you're Notre Dame, it's not a flaw because you're independent and you're sitting there watching the show if you're in without having to do that risk. Let me tell you what Kirby Smart told me this summer. He told me he's an SEC enthusiast to the core and winning the SEC championship to him is as valuable as winning the national title because they're both equally as hard to achieve and just got harder. Okay, so that's fine, and, and I mean, that's a whole other conversation, which I don't believe in for a second, but that's, Paul, let, let's just go to this here. Once you've, to me, it seems, this is a flaw in the system. Making the conference championship game should automatically be better than not making it. Mm -hmm. So getting in there and losing should not put you behind a team that didn't make it and thus didn't have that opportunity to lose. That's how I view it. Paul, you are the dean of the SEC. How do you view it? <laughs> I, I agree with you, Greeny. Uh, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey told me last week it should be a reward to get to the championship game. But the bad news is it is not. Kirby Smart last year had an undefeated regular season. He went to the championship game, lost to Nick Saban, and got knocked out of the playoffs. So, yes, it's uh, what Lane Kiffin said is correct. You'd rather not go there, but the problem is uh, – some you you don't have a choice in the matter uh, it, it's going there's going to be a tiebreaker and you get in based on a number of tiebreakers but the the situation for Kiffin could be very dangerous here's why he doesn't want to go because if he goes with a 10 and 2 record and loses he is probably going to get knocked out because he has a loss to Kentucky which is extremely bad so it doesn't matter whether you want to or not you better win the game if you go though if you're if you end up with three losses because you're very likely going to get knocked out Heather you had another point Right. So the committee also considers who you're playing, where they're ranked, and how the game unfolds. Everyone's assuming just because you lose, you're going to get knocked out. But let's take Indiana and Ohio State this week. How that game matters and how that game is played out matters to the selection committee. If it's a close game and a loss to a top five team, you're probably not going to get knocked out of it. But if it's 2014 Ohio State, Wisconsin, and you lose 59 to zero, the answer is pretty clear. Also, toughen up. Win your conference championship game and prove that you're one of the best teams in the country. <laughs> look at Heather calling them out. What do you, Lewis, you do the games every yeah, single weekend. Yeah. What do you make of this? Yeah, look, I, I think there, there obviously there, there is some, some fear amongst SEC coaches that given the schedules that these guys play and the way that they are banging heads with some of the best programs and arguably, well, to me, inarguably, the best programs in the country, because I've seen them play. That they're going to get knocked out of the, the out of the CFP because they're just going to wind up cannibalizing one another. Right. So I understand what the fear is, though. I just hope that the the playoff selection committee is able to look at this objectively and look and go when they sit in that room and they watch the tape, they really do pick the 12 best teams. That the 12 best teams make it here outside of the four conference championships because there are good, there may be some three loss teams in the SEC that are better than teams. That would, you know, in this kind of scenario that people are talking about, that get into the college football playoff. There's no question about that. Absolutely. So, Paul, final word. I'm going to take your temperature on this every week. How many teams, when it's all said and done, how many teams from your conference are going to wind up in out of the 12? I think it will be four, Greeny. Uh, and some of it depends on Notre Dame. Uh, if Notre Dame were to lose one of the last two games, it might open the door for five.
Okay. Mm. We're saying four or five. You see the standings there. We'll see where everyone gets put tonight. Uh, frustrating for the coaches. I know it's uh, you know it's disappointing for the fans. We just aren't playing very well. Um, happens we're doing that uh, at home for sure. We've had a big run of home games that we haven't done it. So uh, uh, we just aren't playing well, and it's several things out there. It's, it's not uh, really uh, the amount of the score at home. It's not really. It's just the way we're playing. Well, it's at least a little bit the amount of the score. They have lost six consecutive home games going back to last year's playoffs and trailed by at least 20 points in all six of them. That had never happened to any team in NFL history before. And, Jeff, you were telling us earlier uh, inside the building how brutal a time like this oh, can be. It is brutal. I mean, Pelotons that have been in offices are now getting shipped back home because the <laughs> wife needs them. And, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the office doors are good. But, you know, you go in, there was, used to be full bookshelves. It, like, disappeared. You walked in. I know in my experience, I was like, hey, where did all the stuff go? I just, I, I'm just cleaning up. I'm just, I'm just cleaning my it. office. Oh, oh, okay. We're, we're, all, we're all still good. We're, we, it is, okay. it is deflating and painful. So there, there, there literally is nothing left to be said about this year's Cowboys. You know if there was, I'd want us to say it. <laughs> okay. So, but there's nothing to be said. Yeah. So all we can do is look to their future. And Des Bryant, one of the great Cowboys of recent memory, is looking to the future. A12, Cindy, if you would please. He tweeted, I'm Cowboys to the heart. If I'm the Cowboys, I'd fire everyone after the season. There's young, hungry talent in the upcoming draft. Also, I'd consider Deion Sanders as the next head coach. I've heard that so many times from so many different people and places. Yeah. Lewis Riddick, you were a teammate of Dion's. You've known him for what, decades mm -hmm. and decades, and you guys are close. This is certainly not the first time people are suggesting Dion back yeah. to Dallas. What do you think of that as a possibility? The NFL needs and probably, I really realistically should want Dion much more than I believe Dion wants the NFL or needs the NFL. Mm. Okay, so he right now is in the driver's seat if there is legitimate interest in him. I don't know if the NFL is a great fit for him because of the way he wants to coach and what he demands in terms of player buy-in, player discipline, no second-guessing the coach. Look, there's a lot of things with, and I don't want to, I don't want to stereotype every NFL player. And you're right. In the last block, Nick, you called me out on this, and, and you're right. Not every player does not want to be coached hard. There are players that want to be coached hard. And Dion, make no mistake, do not get fooled by the glasses, the gold chains, the change of outfits. This man is old school. And he's no nonsense. And he will tell you that. And if you go watch his football teams and watch how they practice, it's no nonsense. Yep. But I, d I don't know if he wants to deal with the NFL right now. I don't, I don't, I don't know that. I'm not going to say <laughs> definitively. But in my talkings with him, it would take a lot in order for him to leave the college game. It's going to take a lot for him to ever leave Colorado. Yeah. You see how they're playing right now? Yeah. You see how this football team looks right now? Why would you want to leave that? They could we'll get see. a buy. People will talk about the possibility of an opening at Florida State, which, of yeah. course, is his sure. uh, alma mater. So there's any number of different directions this thing can go. But, yeah. Dan, you and I have both been around the block long enough to know when the name is mentioned this many times, yeah. so someone's talking about it somewhere. I'm hearing it everywhere I turn. I mean, it's out there in the Cowboy connection because he played there. Like, it all makes sense some level of sense. I still don't believe that it's likely to happen in Dallas because I don't believe that Jerry Jones wants that, that uh, a superstar coach that attracts that much attention. Jerry Jones is the face of the Cowboys. Hi, các bạn đang xem trên kênh YouTube của mình. Video ngày hôm nay mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho tất cả các bạn là tô mò những bức tranh bức vẽ tô mò sao cho thật là đẹp. Và bây giờ chúng ta cũng bắt đầu nào. Bây giờ mình sẽ tiếp tục tô mò nhé các bạn.
Jadi Xin chào tất cả các bạn đang xem trên kênh youtube của mình Video ngày hôm nay mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho tất cả các bạn là tô mò Những bức tranh bức vẽ tô mò sao cho thật là đẹp Và bây giờ chúng ta cũng bắt đầu nào Xin tiếp tô mò chứ
Promoción a, 